Good morning, and um, a very warm welcome to our Wednesday communion. And begin with some, with, with some, uh, well, some worrying news, and for your prayers that Paul Wallace was taken into hospital this morning with um, with high blood pressure and an arrhythmic. I think that's the right thing. Heart. So. Um, oh. Is he? Oh, oh, oh. Cardio. Thank you. Okay, okay. Right, thank you very much, Joe. Will. So we must remember Paul. And any um, particular notices anyone's got? Just a reminder that on the 23rd of March, the Choral Society is doing Bach's St John Passion in English. Lovely. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed, Morris. And um, I don't think I welcomed uh, people online. <clears throat> if I didn't, welcome. And um, we're going to be thinking a bit later about Jesus, the light of the world. And um, it's lovely just to see the candles being lit just now. The light of the world. Wonderful theme. And so we begin, grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. And so <clears throat> we come to our confession. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord who is full of compassion and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Wash away all my iniquity <clears throat> and cleanse me from my sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Lord, have mercy. Lord. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, <clears throat> pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> At the collect for the, the fifth Sunday of, of Lent, which I think is next Sunday, most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world, grant that by faith in him who suffered on the cross, we may triumph in the power of his victory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And um, we have just one reading. It is the gospel reading. So if you um, feel able to stand, 
uh, uh, Paul's going to read that for us. Thank you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. John chapter 8, beginning at verse 12. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him, Here, are, here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid, for I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I came from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. <clears throat> but if I do judge, <clears throat> my decisions are true because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law, it is written that the testimony of two witnesses is true. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they asked him, where is your Father? You do not know me or my Father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple courts near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him, because his hour had not yet come. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Do sit down, please. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you've given us this amazing theme for this morning, <clears throat> and we pray that you will, you will speak to us deeply um, through Jesus' words, I am the light of the world. In his name we pray, amen. amen. <clears throat> and um, so I'm going to do this on three headings, as we often do, physical light, spiritual light in the Old Testament, and Jesus, the light of the world. Um, I, I hated physics at school. I just didn't understand it, whatever. The same with chemistry. It was, it was probably the way it was taught. The only, the only thing I remember about chemistry was getting clipped round the ear for putting something over a Bunsen burner I wasn't supposed to. There you go. <clears throat> so anyway, physical light is fascinating. And of course, there are many, many sorts of physical light. There's the natural light of the sun. Uh, there's lightning. There's the aurora. I mean, wasn't it amazing the other day when people all over the country saw the aurora? I wish I'd seen it. Ah, um, and certain insects uh, em emit light, don't they? Has anyone ever seen fireflies? Yes. Oh, my <laughs> word. They're magical, aren't they? and uh, glow worms, <clears throat> and there's man-made light, light bulbs, and uh, all sorts, fluorescent la laser light, for instance. So um, light has many qualities and many functions. Light can shine ahead, like a tor torch light to show us the way or show us danger. Street lamps show the way ahead and show up any danger, human or natural. Light can reflect off shiny objects, ref refract off shiny objects and sort of go off in different directions. And in certain circumstances, light will bend. And strangely, and I, 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 oh, I can't get my head around this, it can appear as beams or particles. It has many different colours. It can be faint or very bright, soft, harsh, dazzling. So concentrated and powerful, in, for instance, laser light, that uh, surgical operations on the eye can be done with it. You always just hope that the, the guy's got a steady hand who's operating. No. Um, it could be shone, a laser light can be shone from the ground, as we know, and even dazzle the eyes of a pilot flying at 
however many thousand feet above. Spiritual light, secondly, also has many functions and lights. Supremely, God is light, and of course, God through Jesus. And um, so potentially or actually for believers, for us, um, God is, is our light. He's the, the main guide in our lives. Psalm 27 verse 1 says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? It's a good one to remember, isn't it? If we are feeling afraid of something, maybe illness or um, circumstances, something happening in our family or with a, with a friend. That's a wonderful verse, 20, Psalm 27, 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall then shall I fear? So, you know, he's going to be with us forever. Whatever happens, he's going to be with us. Psalm 18, 28. My God turns my darkness into light. So, if we're uncertain about anything in our lives, or if we're going the wrong way, God's light can shine in and show us the right way, and... Um, uh, and can show us, you know, what's right and what's wrong. Doesn't mean we always obey that, but there you go. I'm sure all of us can think of times when we have been in the dark about something, we've prayed, um, and, um, and then God has shown us the answer. We haven't got time to give examples, but perhaps on another occasion. <laughs> Psalm 31, 16, let your light shine on your servant, a prayer to God that he would shine his light on us. It's so important, isn't it, to be asking God for his light. Psalm 31, 16, sorry, 36, 9, in your light we see light. In God's light we see truth. We see what is right um, in whatever it is, in our culture, in things we hear from other people. We're given a certain amount of discernment um, through God's light. God's word is light. And um, famously in, in Psalm 119, um, just a couple of verses here, the unfolding of your words gives light. As we meditate, if we re as we carefully read God's word or, or meditate on it, um, we're often given light, aren't we, for our lives. Um, and it gives understanding to the simple. You know, you don't have to be a, a brain box to be uh, to read the Bible. Otherwise, uh, I'd be lost. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. That is one of the most beautiful, isn't it? That God's word is a lamp to guide us, a light to my path to show us the way to go. And um, there are places, in, for example, in Isaiah 50, verse 11, I'm not going to read it, but God gives warnings to those who follow their own light instead of his light, who choose to not follow God's light, but to choose their own light. And in that particular verse, it says that actually they will end up, um, they'll, they'll end up really miserable and, um, you yeah, know, uncomfortable. Jesus, the light of the world. The Old Testament prophets foresaw and prophesied God sending uh, the light in the Messiah. <clears throat> and um, the, the best verse we know about this is Isaiah 9-2, probably, which we read at, at Christmas, uh, where Isaiah, writing hundreds of years before Jesus, was shown by God uh, uh, that the, the light will be coming. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. Um, John is the gospel writer who quotes Jesus most, the most about the expression light of the world. Matthew uses it on one occasion, but, but John is the one who has all the I am sayings and uh, he uses the expression, he quotes Jesus a number of times as saying he's the light of the world. Uh, for instance, we know in chapter, that wonderful first chapter of John's Gospel, in verse 4, 
in him, in Jesus, was life, and that life was the light of men. In other words, the example and guide for all people. Verse uh, 5 of John 1, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not put it out, or, or possibly uh, cannot um, uh, understand it. Um, so he's brought spiritual, intellectual light. God brings, um, sorry, Jesus brings spiritual and intellectual light. And uh, in verses 7 and 8, John testifies that he, he is a witness to the light. He's, he's seen the light, the, the, Jesus himself. And verse 9, the true light among so many other so-called lights that people follow, um, the true light, the real light, the only light, the only absolute, perfect and reliable light um, that people follow, the light of the world, the brightest light that there is. So here in John, uh, John 8, verse 12, Jesus says, I am the light of the world, Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And that's a challenging one, isn't it? Whoever <clears throat> follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. That, that, that's challenging. In other words, if we follow constantly and consistently, as well as we can, in every part of our lives, um, Jesus will show us the way. Um, and in, in John 14 and 15 particularly, it, Jesus emphasizes the two very important aspects, if we love him and if we obey him. I mean, people sort of casually say they're Christians, but actually we know that being a Christian is not just, oh yes, which I suppose I used to think when I was, when I was young, Oh, I'm saved, you know, I'm going to go to heaven, and that, that's the main thing. Well, it's not, is it? Um, it? It's actually having that wonderful relationship with Jesus now, loving him above all, and obeying him, even when it's hard. Um, and we've all, we've all fallen short there. We haven't, we haven't always obeyed. We've all done things which we knew well, Jesus wouldn't be very happy with. Um, but, of course, he, he does forgive. And um, in John 12, 46, Jesus said, I've come into the world as a light so that no one who believes in me should stay in the darkness. In other words, if, we tr if we're true believers, truly committed and living close, in a close living relationship with Jesus, we have no excuse to remain walking in darkness. <clears throat> Um, John Milton um, actually put, he, he, he um, had this, this lovely prayer uh, to, well, to God or to Jesus as the light. Thou celestial light shine inward. And, uh, um, uh, uh, I can't read my own writing, it's not unusual. Um, shine inward and the mind through all her powers irradiate. There plant eyes, all mist from there, purge and disperse, that I may see and tell of things invisible to mortal sight. I love that. So he's asking God to shine his light deeply into us and reveal things which we can't see in, in our normal physical human condition. Now, we rarely see absolutely total darkness, do we? I mean, really... In this, in this country. Um, in the UK, when night falls, we reach out and we, we touch the light switch. Even outside, we're generally, not, all, not in every place, of course, provided with street lights. And um, even the night sky is lightened because of the light pollution. The only time I ever encountered total darkness was underground. Um, I don't make a habit of going underground, I'm not a troglodyte or something, but I, I went caving when I was at school. I, I'm not sure if I went once or twice or only once. I think it might have been only once because it scared me to death. Um, but I can remember coming out of this narrow passage into a huge cavern 
And um, the, the teacher, the master who was with us, said to turn our, our lights off. It was the oxyacetylene lamps in those days. Oh, my gosh, that was a long time ago. <laughs> yes. Anyway, um, <clears throat> and so we did. And it, the darkness was just absolute solid black. Um, absolutely, my gosh, like no other black I've seen, I think. Um, his hearers, Jesus' hearers, would have known all about darkness because they didn't have all these wonderful things that we have. And they, they would have known the huge dangers of going out at night and walking uh, in, in, in dark places where there could be, there could be um, people waiting to, uh, to, to knock you on the head or whatever. Um, <clears throat> now, when Jesus said these words... It looks as if it was at the end of the Feast of Sukkot, or Tabernacles. Um, actually, at the end, or maybe just after the, uh, after the end of Tabernacles, when the memories of Tabernacles, the festival, would be in people's minds. Tabernacles was the most spectacular and the high point of the Jewish feasts. It remembered God's, and celebrated God's freeing his people from slavery in Egypt and living in temporary shelters during their days in the wilderness. At the end of the first day of the festival, the priests and Levites went to the court of women, which was the most frequented, apparently, of the temple courts, and four, uh, were, four enormous candlesticks were set up. They were 50 cubits high. Now, I think, it, isn't a cubit supposed to be yeah, that thing? So, so what would you say, a couple of feet? Yes. Eight inches. So you might try and well, work that out, some mathematician. 50, 50 of those. Um, and four golden bowls were placed on top of them. Four ladders were rested against them. And four youths of priestly descent stood at the top of the ladders, holding ten-gallon pitchers filled with pure oil, which they poured into each bowl. We're talking massive things, aren't we? Huge quantities of, uh, presumably, olive oil. The priests and Levites used their own old worn-out robes um, for wicks. The light shining out was so bright that apparently all Jerusalem and beyond could see it. It was, well, it must have been incredible, must not it? Um, th there, there were torches, music, singing and dancing long into the night. And so it was an amazing time, and, and all the imagery and the light would be in people's minds. Um, in our natural, as a lovely Christian lady from Tonga we used to know used to put it, um, our minds can be blind, can't they, to God's truth. Um, however, with the light of Jesus, in the light of Jesus, through the Word, His Word, and the Holy Spirit, we see in a fresh new way. Jesus illuminates our minds gradually, doesn't he? As, as, we, as a person becomes a Christian, um, we're subject to this new, amazing light. And um, gradually, if we let him, our uh, minds are changed. Um, Romans 12, 1 is wonderful on this and various other passages. Um, we're changed in our understanding, our thought patterns and extremely gradually, our attitudes and behavior. Um, I don't know about you, but I, I think I, well, I quite often pray, Lord, change my attitudes, because I know some of my attitudes are still, are still not, uh, not good at all. And so, God is light, God's word brings light, and Jesus is the light of the world. Let me... Just finish again with that uh, verse 12 of chapter 8, um, uh, which is so, so powerful. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are our light. We do pray that you would be the light for all of us in every part of our lives. 
And Lord, that you would shine more deeply into our deepest places. That, Lord, you would heal the places that need healing. And that you would illuminate the places which are in any way are in darkness. That you would show us your ways. And that you would change some of our wrong ways, wrong thoughts, wrong attitudes. And Lord, that you would be so strong in us that we will stick with you and your light always, whatever happens, in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's have a, a moment of quiet. So let's stand to proclaim our faith in the words of the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So let's sit or kneel for our prayers. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are the light of the world. Heavenly Father, we thank you uh, that you sent Jesus to be the light, the light of the world, the light for the whole world. And we thank you that you didn't send Jesus just for the Jewish nation, um, but you sent Jesus for everyone. And we know that actually the light you gave the Jewish nation before Jesus, they were, they, they, they were expected to take that light to others. And we know that, as Jesus was quoted as saying in Matthew's Gospel, that not only is he the light of the world, he said to, he said to his disciples, you are the light of the world. So, Lord, we do pray that we might know your light in our own lives, but also, equally, we would share your light with others in all kinds of ways. And we do pray this for the church, and particularly for the church in this country. And, Lord, we, we just bring before you, and, and how you must weep over your church, which so often gets goes down goes down side roads uh, and and forgets what it's supposed to be all about do we pray dear lord that you would you would uh, wake up those of our leaders who are so concerned with other matters and lord you would remind them of their main job to lead us uh, to lead all their people um, into the things of yourself the ways that you tell us to live in. <clears throat> and we do pray for the church everywhere that you will fill it with your light. And we especially pray for the church where uh, the Christians are persecuted. And we pray that, we thank you that they do shine like lights, as we know from many of our friends who are from Iran. And they have some extraordinary stories to tell. And we thank you for the bravery of so many who are persecuted and who stand up for their faith and, they, and they, they don't show fear. And so, Lord, we, uh, we do pray that through their light, <clears throat> many of their, uh, of their um, 
persecutors would see that light and come to know you as truth, as the truth, the way, the truth, and the life. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, we do pray, Lord, for all those countries where there is unrest and unhappiness, violence, war, so many, so many uh, that we know about and so many we don't know about. But we continue to pray the peace between Russia and Ukraine, between Israel and, um, the, and, Pal and the Palestinians, Lord. We, we really do pray that these will come to an end and that things will change under your hand. And Lord, we do pray for our own government. We do pray for your light, that you will shine your light on them and also on, uh, on, on, the, um, on us all, that we might vote wisely when the general election comes. Um, and Lord, we, can, we see that the, the government is in disarray and um, we, we just want your guidance because we know your guidance is the only one that will produce the, the best results and the results you want. And we do pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray for your light to shine in our education system, our national health system, and indeed in the arts, in our, in our media, uh, in, in our cinemas and theatres and, and books. Um, much more, dear Lord. May we see your light breaking through. May people be becoming disillusioned with um, the ways of the world, the dead-end ways of the world, and um, open themselves to your light. May we see this country turn round, and, and may we even see revival, Lord. And now let's have a moment of quiet and um, to pray for God's light for those we know who are ill, who are grieving, uh, who are in any state of anxiety at this time, praying especially for Paul and, and Joyce. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, again, if you're, if you're, I think you're all able to stand, if, if, if those who are able to stand anyway, let's stand for the peace. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's exchange a sign of the peace.
know the ropes <coughs> about the way we take communion, don't you? I'm sure, so I'm sure I don't need to uh, <coughs> repeat. The Lord is here. He is here. <coughs> Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <coughs> it is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these forty days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, <coughs> you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendour of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast, with joyful hearts and minds we bless you for your mercy <clears throat> and join with saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this as often as you eat it in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it <clears throat> in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and we look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. And uh, let us pray. And uh, let us say the Lord's Prayer rather together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Jesus, Lamb of God, 
have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. moment of quiet before we come to receive communion in which we can bring our deepest needs to the Lord in faith that he will he will meet those needs
appreciate some help to finish the wine off afterwards by uh, anyone who'd li <laughs> would like to help me. <coughs> I only walked, but I don't want to be walking in a wo wiggly line on the way here. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that we do not, sorry, that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others, as you were the servant of all, and gave up your life and died for us, but, uh, uh, but are alive and reign now and forever. Amen. Amen. So we say together. Father of all, we give you our thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, you declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all who you love this day, at this Lent time, and this Easter tide, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Morris, I don't know if you'd like to come up and um, deal with the wine. Uh, <laughs> this is, well, uh, oh, Pauline. <laughs>